pada tahun 1995 dan pada tahun 1999 dan pada tahun 2006. Di share screen aja enggak? Sudah, saya share screen. Oh, sudah ya? Oke. Okay. terlihat, Bu. Oke. Okay. And the school of exercise from Professor Muhammad Salib. Uh, first is atmospheric chemistry and air pollution and surfaction and humic like substance in the atmosphere, outdoor and indoor air quality, inorganic and organic composition at atmospheric aerosol and volatile organic compounds. And there is also outcome size and award size from Professor Muhammad Sali. Uh, like the publication award from episode with the high high cumulative impact factor pada tahun 2017 from Faculty of Science and Technology Universitas Kebangsaan Malaysia 2017 and then uh, Malaysia Commer Commercialization Year a new institute award 2019 and best poster award in Kyoto University, Japan. And Professor Salib also had many administrative and management and the awesome position like a uh, deputy dean at University Kebangsaan Malaysia and head center of tropical climate change system faculty of science and technology University Kebangsaan Malaysia. And this is a knowledge dissemination, like a vacation, scientific presentation, and human resource development. And it's so amazing, selected list publication, I think. A selected list publication is most of them published in high credited journal in the corpus. Uh, in the end session, we have question and answer session. And for our participants, please write down your question in chat room, and we will discuss discuss it in the end of the session. Okay, uh, I hope everyone can enjoy this session. And for Professor Muhammad Talib bin Latif, this screen is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Very good morning. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih saudari pengerusi majlis yang saya muliakan uh, Dr. Lilis, uh, Dr. Aziza, para profesor, pensyarah dan juga semua uh, para pelajar yang sama-sama mengikuti uh, ceramah pada pagi ini. So let me share my screen. Okay. The title of my presentation today actually is how to write a good systematic literature review paper. So I think this topic is very important uh, because uh, many of us will write literature review uh, for our uh, thesis, for example, for student. And many also researchers also like to uh, write literature review. Uh, this, uh, during this time, because of uh, the limitations of lockdown, COVID-19 pandemic and so on, many researchers, I think, start to write their uh, review paper. So uh, today, uh, my topic is about systematic literature review, but I also want to mention a little bit on literature review, uh, review paper, other than systematic literature review only. So this is uh, my uh, information about systematic uh, review. Systematic review traditionally answer empirical questions. This is not related to a specific data like a normal article. This is based on empirical questions, based on experience, observation, 
uh, and based on unbiased assessment of all the empirical studies that address it. So usually we actually uh, read many papers and we try to create the questions. And after that, we try to write our systematic uh, reviews. So systematic reviews undertake this substantial task and answer the questions in a form accessible to decision makers. Usually this uh, review paper or systematic review paper, very important for the policy maker and it's assembled all related studies and also actually uh, focus on the information related to uh, main research questions. So what question do we want to answer for this uh, review is very important. Uh, so similar with the normal article. So these systematic reviews for researchers, researcher Biasa, I think it's good for us to work together because for me, uh, systematic reviews paper or review paper, usually it's very hard to write compared to normal paper. Normal paper, I think it's very easy. We have a research topic based on our experiment, based on our data and based on our uh, observation in the lab or data that we get from survey. So we uh, can write our introductions after that uh, methodology and after that write our uh, result discussions based on our data. And then after that, we uh, discuss our data. But for systematic reviews, we need to read a lot of papers and good for us to work together for these systematic reviews. For me, uh, when I write a uh, review papers or systematic review papers, I usually uh, discuss with my friend. After that, I choose a topic and I try to divide my work into several subtopic and different people will write different subtopic. After that, we combine together and then become a good review paper. That's what I did for my systematic review paper. So I cannot write alone uh, for this systematic reviews because it also uh, need a lot of work and not, uh, need a lot of reading. So all of us need to focus on our subtopic. And after that, they need to read, the, all the co-authors need to read, assemble all the papers, and after that, they write their subsection themselves. After that, we combine together and I will look overall information on the systematic review. That's what I did for the review papers. I usually write with uh, other, other researchers, my friend, my student, and all of them need to find literature themselves. So after that, I will combine everything. I will try to uh, look from one section to another, everybody then I then share with others and they also look at the flow of the story. And after that, we uh, discuss together on how we can improve our flow of information. So this is very important. But for a student, I think you also can write a systematic review if you are a master student or PhD student based on your literature review in your thesis. That one is very good. Many of my friends for the time being in Indonesia, good researchers, they ask their students to write a systematic review based on their thesis literature review, chapter two. Uh, most of the time our chapter one is introductions. Chapter two is literature review. So uh, many researchers these day ask their students to write systematic review based on their literature review. So they can have one paper based on the literature review from student thesis. So for, for you to write a good uh, systematic review, you need to write a good literature review in your thesis. That one I think is quite a good uh, strategy for certain researchers. They ask their students to write a systematic review based on their literature review. So if you want to write a systematic review from your literature review, means that you need to have a very good literature review. So you need to make sure all information are relevant, new, and not repeat other literature review from other students. So 
this uh, good strategy for uh, many researchers this day because uh, as you know that for the time being, time is very limited. So uh, also because of this uh, pandemic and so on, not many people can go to the lab. Uh, based on discussion from my uh, group members, based on uh, from my um, editors, from editors from many journals, they expected next year there are not so many normal paper, uh, article paper, uh, submitted to journal because uh, of this pandemic condition. Many people cannot go to the lab for the time being. In Malaysia, postgraduate students still need to work from home for, uh, for the time being. So it's very hard for them to publish paper next year. So uh, one strategy is to write a systematic review. Okay, for systematic reviews, we need to formulate the review questions and eligibility or criteria for that paper. So uh, I think Chris's question is very important. Either you want to write a normal paper, research paper, or you want to write a review paper. You need to know what your research questions, what your what the what is the main question you want to answer from your reviews. That one is very very important. So before you start your your writing, you need to know is it this review is good uh, review and provide good questions for the, 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 the researchers. So you need to understand what is your research questions. Some research questions are already answered by many researchers. You don't have to do that again and again. But you need to find a specific questions that uh, I think are suitable for a certain conditions, certain uh, research and suitable for the or the researchers to understand it. Secondly, you need to identify, identify all the literature that meets the eligi uh, eligibility criteria. Uh, this is a quite hard part for literature review papers or review papers because you need to find a lot of papers that has similar, similar uh, result or similar questions that you can include into your papers. You need to read a lot of papers. Sometimes uh, because of limitation, for example, in my university, they now uh, not even uh, subscribe Springer. So you need to find in maybe PubMed, uh, Scopus, or other, uh, other uh, finding website and so on, such as Google Scholar, and you need to find the abstract first and after that try to find the paper. Maybe you can use research kit for example to ask the paper to the main authors or corresponding authors. So you need to read a lot of papers uh, related to the, the review. After that, you need to extract and synthesize all the data from the paper. I think uh, most of the time you don't have to read uh, in detail the introductions, but you need to find something from your the abstract and after that go to the result discussion and look at their data. Is it the data is suitable for your review? So you need to make sure all the information uh, data related to the uh, paper or your review can be extract from other papers and include into your papers. You need to make sure you include reference from that particular paper. So for this, you need to read the overall paper, especially in the result and discussions. So you need to find, you need to look at the, the table and figures and try to extract the data. That's a one another challenge for, for, for the review paper. And after that, you need to derive, derive and present the result, the answer to the review questions. This also another challenge for you because you need to extract the data and put into your table and figures. So you need to make sure your figures or your table can be understood by other researchers. So you need to make sure the table is suitable for your review paper. Otherwise, sometimes the table is too long. It's not suitable for the, the review paper. It's so hard for the journal to uh, publish or present your data. So you need to make sure you can summarize 
data from various papers into your table in your review paper. Sometimes maybe you need to uh, draw a figure for you to summarize all the data. So uh, I think uh, this is the, 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 the main important factors uh, for the review paper. For uh, the first one, you need to find your review questions, research question. Is it that question is suitable and important and, uh, and very, very, very good for, for you to present your review paper? Second, you need to identify the literature, means that you need to find, you need to, to, to find time to uh, try to find good literature for your review. So you need to go to the uh, certain database for you to make sure that you not even uh, left any, any, any important paper. Uh, that's why I think you need to use uh, like PubMed you need to use scopers and so on. Uh, try your best to include the recent paper as well as the most cited papers. I mentioned uh, in my previous lecture, the recent paper is very, very important because these people most of the time will become your reviewer, uh, your paper reviewer. Second one actually is the, the paper that cited most by the other researchers. So you need to find literature. That's why I said, for me, if I, I, if I want to write a paper like this, I need to have many researchers involved with my, my, my paper. After that, you need to extract and synthesize the data. So you need to find paper, if the data is suitable and logic, if the data is, uh, has similar uh, conditions, similar uh, uh, methodology, maybe you can include into your uh, table or your uh, figures. And after that, you need to draft and present your result in a table or in a figure. So this is the main point that you need to consider when you want to write a paper. Uh, you need to think carefully if you have a lot of data, how you want to summarize the data. We don't want a very long table that not suitable for a uh, paper in the journal. So uh, after that, you need to choose uh, to do a review on a topic which uh, fascinate you or other entire process can be extremely tedious. I think it's very important for you to write something that related to your research topic or the one that uh, make you, uh, you like this topic, for example, uh, fascinate you. For example, I like to write something about air pollution, maybe biomass burning, solid Asia, and so on. This topic is very familiar to me. So I can write this kind of research review. It means that the topic must be familiar with yourself and your, your co-authors. If you want to write something that not related to you, for example, you want me to write something related to water, for example, or you want to me, you want me to write something about uh, climate change, a very general topic. It's very hard for me to write this uh, review paper. So if you want to write something that related to yourself, related to your, your group of research, so it's very easy for you to uh, understand the flow of the topic and you understand uh, uh, the, 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 the subtopic and also you know who the one that uh, write this kind of research topic. So it's important for you to choose a topic that very familiar with yourself, especially for the corresponding author or main author. This would usually include searching the literature and finding the gaps in evidence. So you need to, to, to find the, the, the literature and understand the gap that you want to present in your uh, literature or your review paper. So usually we know the, the information. Now we want to highlight what you want to present other than what people knew already. So that one we call is gap. So gap means that something different that you want to show compared to other uh, normal knowledge or knowledge that 
have been known by others. What gap actually you want to show in your research or research review? This gap is very important. Means that what's new thing, what the novelty that you want to include in your research review. If necessary, register your review, for example, in, there is a, um, uh, there are many uh, website that can indicate a systematic review. For example, uh, Prospero, you can write something. If I want to write, for example, uh, COVID-19 in Soviet Asia, I can put here, they will show me almost similar paper uh, topic that related to the one that I include like a pattern search, you, know? uh, you can see that, oh, somebody already done this kind of thing. Maybe you can do different things, for example, like that. Maybe people already done COVID-19 in the world, you want to focus on solid Asia and so on. So if you find then you found that several other research also related to your topic, maybe you can try your best to make sure your study or your, your review is different compared to others. Other, otherwise, people will compare and look at the similarity. But most of the time, the similarity, uh, the, our paper is different from others. So even though we have same title, but our focus is different. So but better for us to check, like a pattern search. So research questions, I think, I think it's very important. I mentioned the, uh, before this, uh, when I, I give a talk, for the first one, I mentioned about research questions. For this review paper, research questions is very, very important. What questions you want to answer for this? For example, for the COVID-19, what is research question you want to know? Maybe you want to know how a, a pandemic of COVID-19 reduced the level of air pollutant in certain areas in the world, for example. That one is your research question. You want to look how, uh, what's the percentage of this air pollutant reduced because, because of pandemic COVID-19. So you can write a paper and you can find literature related to air pollution and pandemic COVID-19 COVID pandemic, for example. And after that, you try to answer the research questions related to this research topic. Try to do different, try to highlight novelty and try your best to highlight different, uh, the difference between your research and your review compared to other review. So you can look at other people review, for example, in, in Scopus or other, other, other database, Google Scholar and so on, try to do different. Think of questions which you want to answer at the end of your review. So in your conclusion, you will answer your research questions. I think that one is very, very important. So it is crucial to take expert advice either from your supervisor or senior colleague. If you are a student, it's better for you to get advice from time to time from your supervisor or senior colleague on how to write this topic because they are expert on this uh, research topic. Uh, because I think uh, last time I always, uh, I always uh, consider this review paper actually need to be written by an expert rather than a very junior researchers or junior uh, student. But this day I found there are many papers also uh, wrote by this junior lecturer as well as the student. So I think you can write a review paper, a systematic review paper, but you need to, to make sure you have mentor, you have supervisor, you have other colleagues that can comment. I, afraid that if you don't have any, any advice, you will write a very simple or very common uh, literature review or review paper. Uh, usually this, this very common information actually uh, is not liked by the editor. Something that they already know already. So find, uh, after you find your research question, your defi you define your research questions, you need to find your literature. So this one I think is very a uh, hard part of, uh, for paper writing, systematic review writing. You need to assemble all related manuscript, make sure everything in your database, 
there are many ways for example many people put into into uh, they, they transfer the data into excel for example start from start to read from the title and abstract first so you can look at the information from the abstract if the paper has a good abstract usually they mention the data that they, they, they present in your paper and question that you want to answer in your paper so don't read everything first because this is take a lot of time better for you start with the title and the abstract so after that you need to highlight main finding from the abstract and conclusions uh, I, as i mentioned you can use uh, this is quite easy to google to use a google scholar scopus web of science pubmed and etc so it's good for you to to find literature and try to look the recent uh, re, uh, recent papers as well as the highest citation paper this is example that i can find literature for example uh, equity uh, biomass burning in south asia so i use uh, pubmed over here i can i can look at the paper and i can look at the title if i want to look the abstract i can look at the abstract and i can see if the uh, the the the, the paper is free or not so pubmed is very good when you want to determine uh, the, the the paper uh, to find the paper and you can look is it the paper has only abstract full text uh, or full text that you need to pay for for the the the, the paper also uh, mention about the associate uh, data so if i want to write something about biomass burning in south asia for example I can type into PubMed and they will give me uh, information related to all research uh, done by other researchers for biomass burning in solid Asia. So uh, you can see and you can find literature based on different database. Okay, you can uh, you can use Google Scholar for example. Also quite easy this day. After you get your paper, you need to start screening the title of the studies for inclusion and exclusion. Maybe certain paper is not important, or you can exclude uh, main paper. You try your best to uh, put into your paper, and usually you have very important paper. When I write literature review, I usually find several very important paper. This paper usually I print and put on my table. So this paper is very, very important. Give a lot of uh, data, give a lot of information, maybe produce information from other papers and so on. Usually this very important paper I will put on my table. Uh, then start extracting the required information from the included studies, like title, authors, year, journal, study, design, name of participant, characteristic, and uh, characteristic of participant. Usually people put in uh, in Excel file uh, from, from the authors, title of the paper, year and so on. So they, they also put a column on database, for example. So you can use this kind of uh, style or you can also put into a table in a Microsoft Word, for example. So it's very important for you to extract all the data all in later information from other literature. So for data systematic review paper can be presented, data for systematic review paper can be presented in table or figure. Most of the time people, we include all the data in table and in figure. Uh, and if the data has similar characteristic, you may include statistical analysis between the data. That's what we call as a meta-analysis. I'm not expert on this, but if the data is homogeneous, the data come from similar uh, methodology, the data come from a similar uh, type of research, if you think that you can analyze the data, for example, by using statistical analysis, compare them, you can do a statistical analysis between different data, 
that this is what we call as uh, meta analysis. But I'm, uh, I'm not very familiar with this topic. But if you have data, you can do this uh, meta analysis study. But if not, just present what data that you have. But you need to be uh, sincere when you present the data. For example, maybe you have two set of data. For example, data of uh, PM 2.5. One data actually use a low volume sampler, low volume air sampler, one instrument. The other one maybe use high volume sampler. So you need to include the different information, different instrument of the data. So the, the, you need to put a column, mention this data is a low volume sampler, the other data is high volume sampler. Time and different characteristic of the data, if possible, also need to include into a table. For example, the data may be collected in 2010. The other one collected in 2019. 2019, we have, for example, his episode. So you need to put 2019. So if possible, the data need to be uh, uh, presented uh, and make sure the data can be uh, understood by the reader. So you need to be sincere to present your data. Not all data, the data is uh, uh, similar data. And please also include the, data, the good data. For example, if you find the data is not logic, Data is bad data, poor data. Please exclude that. Some data actually not, not uh, suitable to present in the review, systematic review. For example, uh, in the uh, common conditions, PM215 is more than 500, for example, 500 microgram per meter cubic. That one is too high in normal conditions. So based on your experience, you can exclude this kind of data because uh, this is a bad data. For example, data that you found uh, PM10 higher than PM25, also uh, uh, PM25 higher than PM10. This also uh, illogical data that you can exclude. So the data, uh, uh, the good, only present a good data in your table and figures. So I just want to give example of systematic review. Systematic review. Uh, systematic review has its own uh, method or its, uh, its own type of paper means that they have uh, their own template for systematic review. Most of the time, when people write a systematic review, they will put a systematic review in the title of the paper. A systematic review of financial implication of air pollution on health in Asia. This is an example of my friend paper mentioned systematic review of financial implication of air pollution. So they have an uh, abstract. This abstract has actually have consists of similar important point as I mentioned. It has a problem statement. It has a methodology. This has main findings support by data as well as conclusions. So uh, data is very important to indicate the result. They have a uh, problem statement over here and they have uh, uh, objective, the objective of the study and they also have methodology for database, PubMed, Scopus, and H Economic Evolution Database and Web of Science were used. So this one, the, the, the first uh, sentence is a problem statement. Second sentence is the objective. Third sentence is the methodology. So it means systematic review usually has methodology. And after that, they uh, show the, the data, the data, uh, the, the main finding. The main finding, for example, uh, I mentioned again, is support by the, the data, the value, the quantitative informations, okay? Rather than qualitative. Quantitative information, I think, is very important in terms of scientific information. Most uh, editor want to look at this quantitative information rather than uh, uh, qualitative. Uh, quanti uh, qualitative. So it means that quantitative is very important. We are from science. We usually need to put quantitative 
uh, information. Okay. For example, uh, last time I mentioned, if you mention high, low, you need to put a uh, p value, for example. Higher, lower, uh, rather than uh, general information, you need to include a detailed information uh, to show the, 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 dif the difference. Okay. I always talk to my students, don't put a very general information in your abstract and your conclusions. Okay, this is, uh, for me, this is social science. If you put the result is higher and lower, something like that. Better, um, maybe for social science, maybe they say, okay, this one is beautiful. It's very hard to define, isn't it? What is, how it's beautiful is beautiful. How bad is bad. So if uh, scientists, they need to put numbers, quantitative information. That's my, 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 my suggestion for your data. And after that, uh, last stop by conclusion, economic impact of air pollution can be huge with significant deterioration of health among the Asian. So this one I think is quite a good uh, example of a paper on systematic review. Other than that, uh, most of the time, when you write a systematic review paper, you need to have the, the framework of your study means that, for example, record identified through search, record after duplication removed, record screen and title and abstract, so a record excluded, record after title. This one is very quite important. I found many uh, systematic review paper, it has this kind of things. So it, uh, it showed uh, how many paper that they identified based on the database. So uh, they removed duplications and from 2000, they become only 1,900. And after that, they screen. Uh, after that, they exclude based on the title and abstract, record of the title abstract. And last study include in this review only have 24 papers. That's an important uh, methodology that need to include for systematic, uh, for the real systematic review paper. So uh, you can read this paper. Maybe I can show you this paper uh, after this, just to, uh, to, to show a good re a systematic review paper uh, for, for, for example, for you to write a good paper. Other than a uh, systematic review paper, I also want to mention about review article. Uh, systematic review usually has their own template. It has methodology, but for review article, it not necessarily has a methodology. So this review article usually does not have specific methodology, just the review. Systematic review has own methodology, own template. So review paper, we can write based on interesting and hot topic. For example, as I mentioned, by Ms. Benning in South Asia, this day, uh, pandemic COVID-19 and human health, for example, implications of uh, uh, pandemic to uh, motor vehicle emissions, you can write something like that. That's whole topic. And usually the editor like that kind of topic. Uh, in South Asia, maybe related to uh, volcanoes activities, how volcanoes activity affect <coughs> human health, for example, in Indonesia, Almost similar to systematic review, but most of the time need authors from different background. So it's good if you can have uh, uh, authors from different background. So you can create a good story. For example, you want to mention equality and human health, uh, biomass burning impact to human health. So it's good if you have somebody who are doing air pollution, somebody who are doing impact of air pollutant toward human health. So you have combinations of different uh, topic and different co-authors can provide good information based on different topics. Maybe after that, you can include suggestions based on the policy. Maybe you can include researchers or uh, co-authors that are very good in terms of policy. So they can write suggestions for policy. Because we are scientists sometimes, we are not good in terms of policy. Maybe uh, for me, I'm a chemist, it's very hard for me to write something related to health, for example. So the combination of these subtopics 
the combination of several co-researchers can give a, uh, inform, information, give good, good information for the review paper. So for a re review paper, first I think you need to identify recent and significant advance and discoveries in particular field of study, almost similar with the systematic review. But this topic usually need to have a very good topic and interesting topic. Uh, not all uh, topic uh, to determine the main people working in specific field. Try to look at different specific field, and try to uh, find co-researchers, co-authors on different specific field. Because when you review, usually you need to review paper from a uh, people who are doing specific research. We don't want find. Uh, we don't want to include information of our review based on other people's introductions. We want to include based on their abstract, based on their result and discussion, and based on their uh, conclusions. Don't include something from their introductions. Introduction actually is not a good uh, uh, reference, okay? I mentioned many times to my student, uh, mentioned if you want to cite a paper, Please cite from people who are expert on that particular field. Don't put something from an introduction. Because many uh, editors know very well different uh, experts in that particular field. So if you include something, uh, information, not related to certain researcher particular field, the editor usually can find it. And then we said, oh, this is not people who are doing this. He only mentioned this in his paper introductions. Okay. My supervisor as an editor, long time editor, he know very well when I put somebody and then after that site about uh, non-related uh, field of that particular uh, researcher. So oh, Talib, this is not people who are doing this. You actually collect from these people introductions, these paper introductions, not good. So to help identify essential gap in research to find a solution. So you need to, similar as a systematic review, for this review, you also want to identify the essential gap in research to find a solution. So you assemble everything, and after that, try to give solutions. Try to answer your research questions based on different, different uh, uh, paper in the letter field. They are used in current debates or for reference. So many this many uh, this paper used as a reference. You want to assemble it and make a, uh, try to write a paper. The, they are good for generating ideas about next field of research. Also in review paper, usually people give uh, generate ideas and suggest based on the main finding of many researchers, what next? What we want to do next? For example, we know everything about air pollution due to biomass burning in Soviet Asia. If you want to write this kind of research, we need to find uh, the information on air pollutant. After that, we found the impact to help. So what next? What people need to do to eliminate or to reduce biomass burning in Soviet Asia based on our literature review or review paper. They also help the learner to become an expert in particular area of study. This process review article is very good for you to be an expert on that particular field. That's why for students, they need to write a literature review in their thesis because this actually make you expert in that particular field. So I suggest uh, if you think that your literature review is good, try to convert your literature review into a review paper. For you to do this, you need to make sure your review is good. Don't put a very common things. For example, you want to do something or uh, thesis on air pollution. Don't put uh, air pollution. After that, PM10, PM2.5, SO2, NO2 and so on. So that, that topic is very common. Many people mention this. If you put a very common things 
in your literature review, people will people will uh, will think this as a, a textbook info. Textbook information. If you put your literature review start from very common thing, air pollution, SO2, NO2, uh, PM10, PM25. This one is actually is a textbook information. I try my best to tell my students, don't put textbook info. We know everything about air pollutant. We want you to write something new in your literature review. So try your best to find interesting topic and subtopic into your literature review. Don't put a very common information that people already knew. And, all, uh, and people easily find in other textbook. That's what we call as textbook info. If I read a thesis and put a very general things, uh, for example, air pollution, SO2, NO2, and so on, no, 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 no um, uh, real literature review, I will put that this is textbook info. <laughs> you need to write, rewrite again. So review articles, usually they have abstract, similar as a normal research paper. It should contain a, 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 approximately about 200 to 300 words as based on general actually, based on general guideline. Some general need 200, maybe the others need 200, 300. It includes a summary of the review questions, primary study review, conclusion of the study, not that you should not cite reference in the abstract. For them, yeah, for sure, you need to, no need to put reference in the abstract and conclusion, okay? So make sure you have a very good problem statement, you have uh, objective, you have uh, uh, information related to the review and the result that you find, and after that, conclusions. After that, you need to have introductions, write the topic or the study, which serve as identifications. Sentence, it should indicate what article contain, clearly outline the order with every subtopic that we we'll discuss in the body of the paper need to be included, need to be summarized in your introduction. Introduction is just like a motivation. Similar as you write, and introduction for your thesis. You want to make sure why this paper is good for others to read. This is what we call as motivations. Introduction, I usually mention to my student, introduction is motivations. Why people want to read your paper? Why this paper is very interesting? You need to make sure, I mentioned to a Cory paper last time, uh, in my previous talk, you need to make sure everything that you include in your result and discussion or your body of your paper, you need to mention a little bit in brief in your introductions. If you mention, for example, toluene, formaldehyde in your uh, uh, result and discussion, for example, in normal paper, you need to include a little bit in the introductions. So you introduce uh, your topic to other people. So you need to include everything in brief. Maybe you need to have uh, about four, uh, four uh, paragraphs, need to make sure the paragraph is good and include everything. And also has a very good flow of information. And the last part of your interaction, you need to mention the objective of your review, why, why you want to be review this paper. And body, body, this includes the subtopic. So when you have a topic for your review article, you need to separate it. You need to structure your, your, your paper into several subtopic. So maybe if it has every subtopic, maybe it also has their own sub subtopic. So you need to uh, differentiate it. You need to discuss maybe with uh, your friend, your supervisor, your colleague. And after that, you try to give uh, uh, the, the topic to other co-authors based on their expertise. Uh, conclusions, it should briefly state your rationale for your review 
and the purpose of the article and answer your research question. I just want to show my uh, example of free view article, impact of regional haze toward air quality in Malaysia, a review. This is an example. I put a lot of researchers over here because we have we actually from different uh, background. For example, me and my student uh, are chemists, uh, Dr. Liu Juneng actually is uh, Dr. Juneng and for Fridolin is meteorologist. Uh, the others actually uh, from 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 uh, engineering. Uh, certain people actually from uh, uh, health, from from medical from medical this is medical doctor, and the others actually from policy, and one of them from from the Department of Environment Malaysia. So we actually separate our our subtopic into different people, and that people will read will be write that paper together, and after that, we assemble everything. This is an example of review a paper on solid Asia, Asian oil palm and its CO2 flux. When I want to write this paper, I'm not very familiar with CO2 flux, but our government give us money for six months and want me to write a paper. So I send it to sustainability. Uh, luckily, our paper is accepted within three months, I think, within uh, three months already published and maybe about one or two months they already uh, uh, accept our paper. This is sustainability, but sustainability uh, from Sweden, the journal actually is a paid journal. You need to pay. This is example of a table that I put for palm oil plantation. So you need to find every, uh, every uh, single paper and try to include year and emissions from different topic. And after that, after I get all information, for example, many review paper want you to draw a figure. For example, I get a lot of different information on uh, net uptake of palm oil, above canopy information and everything, uh, temperature, biomass burning information from different, different uh, papers. I try to draw root emissions, some people are doing root emissions, some people do trunk emissions, um, how actually this, uh, from, from other literature on how uh, this palm oil produce oxygen, how the intense, uh, how the characteristic uh, good for this, uh, the meteorological condition that good for palm oil. So I draw a figure for this review paper. I think many, many of the time, the reviewer want us to summarize our data uh, into a table or into a figure. That's all for my, paper, for my uh, presentation. I just want to share my paper. To, um, that one. Can you look at this? Nampak tak saya punya ni? Belum tampak, bro. Okay, okay. Kita ini. Saya cuba share lagi sekali. Okay, this one. Yeah. <coughs> okay, this is an example of my review paper. So I mentioned I wrote with many researchers. Uh, so many researchers from different uh, agencies in Malaysia. So first I tried, uh, I found a very interesting topic on this impact of regional haze to equity in Malaysia a review. So this is my, my uh, abstract, which is start from the, this one, start from the problem statement, and this one actually start from the this manuscript review, the origin. This is the objective, as I mentioned. Abstract need to have first uh, a problem statement as well as the the the, the 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 objective of the paper. And then after that, this is the body where include information, for example, you want to mention the cost 
I put the, the number of USD, ringgit, Malaysia. And then after that, my conclusions. My conclusion of the abstract. So I, I this is my introductions. Introductions. I have his episode, his conditions, his from biomass burning. And after that, I have my last part of my, my, my uh, review actually is to determine the objective of the study. This, uh, this is the gap I mentioned factors contribute. This is the, the objective of my study. Objective of my study. So after that, I separate my topic into the different topic, chronology of his episode in Malaysia, uh, source of his. So in my review, I also can include I also can include uh, my data, the data that I have from my student paper, I can include, but I don't have to put methodology. And after that, uh, this is a source of activities. For example, if I found the, the paper, uh, the, the maps, the data, I can include the data into my paper without mentioning methodology. So this is source of his, uh, peak combustions, for example, agriculture activities, after that, non-agriculture sources. And I put, after that, I put one condition that can uh, deteriorate the, his event, which is El Nino. This El Nino, I'm not the expert. So I asked one of my friends, uh, several of my friends, Dr. Liu Juning, I mentioned, and Prof. Fidoli, to write this section because I'm not expert on this. I asked him to write a paper, uh, a section on El Nino and his event. So he actually put this information, El Nino event, and until this level. And after that, I include uh, chemical sources. Uh, many of my friends actually is a chemist. I'm a chemist. So we put chemical properties of PM during his. So this is our group, the one that include that. So from our paper and other paper, we put all the in organic information, uh, our data, the data that we collect from other uh, researchers. And then after that, we, uh, and then we put everything on the organic substance. And, and last one, uh, and after that, we put uh, impact of haze. So impact of haze, we have several impact. For example, the impact of health, health impact. So I asked my friend who are doing research on health impact. Prof. Mazura actually is a medical doctor. She the one that helped me to wrote this sections, section. Uh, and then economy impact. I also don't know about economy impact. So I asked my friend in, in other faculty in UKM, economy impact. He the one that wrote information on economy and other impact. So for the way forward, we want to include policy. So we found one friend who are doing policy and air pollution. So we include, we ask him, we ask them to put the way forward and the policy. So we, after that, we read together again and we put everything in one paper. That's why I said, sometime in time, uh, everybody need to be a team player and everybody need to contribute for this kind of paper. So this is paper from uh, many, uh, many researchers. Uh, so I, I want to share another paper. Um, this paper actually, as I mentioned just now, I'm not very good in terms of this, but somebody like, forced me to do this kind of research. So I asked one of my students uh, finish uh, his PhD to write a paper, a review on Southwest Asian of palm oil and CO2 flux. This one, I'm not very good to write a paper. So, but we assemble everything, let us CO2 flux. And after that, uh, this is also many people uh, from, the, uh, for example, Dr. Liu Juning is meteorologist, as I mentioned. Uh, this is for, for, from land use, two people from land use, and the other one from engineering. 
So we actually put uh, the introduction. We explain about palm oil plantations and palm oil plantation. We mentioned about deforestation. And after that, we mentioned about uh, CO2. CO2, and after that, we put this information on the review. Review based on literature regarding the palm oil and plantations. So uh, after that, we separate into certain subtopic, as I mentioned. Uh, I ask people who are know very well on palm oil characteristic to write this, this section, because I don't know about palm oil. Uh, after that, uh, about climate, somebody from climate uh, try to find uh, palm oil and climate. And after that, soil classifications, uh, somebody who are doing soil classifications on palm oil. And after that, we try to find the oil palm and climate change factor uh, from deforestation. Uh, and this is based on the data. If you put this NASA for example, you need to, 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 to make sure you get permission. And after that, peatland areas, uh, oil palm gas emission. Uh, this is data that we collect. After that, we draw uh, uh, figures from, from our uh, data database. And this is a comparison of CO2 emission of uh, palm oil compared to barley, corn, and rubber intact forests. And after that, we write conclusions. The example of paper that I that I uh, wrote together, you can see that even though this is quite simple, the reference actually is about 123. 123 reference to write a very simple information related to palm oil emission, uh, CO2 from palm oil emission. So uh, both paper actually uh, need I think almost similar with other, uh, my first paper. It shows a very, very high number of references, about 100 references. I think that's all for my talk. Maybe we can discuss on the uh, paper that we, uh, that sent to me. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, I, do I need to share the Pepper? Oke, okay, uh, thank you so much for Professor Latif. Uh, there is uh, some question, Prof, from audience. Okay. May I read first question? There is a first question from Ahmed Ayatollah. Uh, does the article systematic review that we make must be registered through Prospero? Tidak, tidak semestinya. Jawapan saya tidak semestinya di register di Prospero. Prospero just for you to find article that sim has similar. Good for you to register it because if other people want to do similar kind of review paper, they will see your paper is in that Prospero. Tidak semestinya perlu di register, tetapi it's good for you to register. I encourage you to register because if we give uh, information that you already done this kind of research to other researchers, tak semestinya di register. Okay. Thank you, Professor Talib. Uh, for Mr. Ahmed, is the explanation from Prof. Talib had answered your question? Okay. Okay. Uh, the second question is from Amalia from UNER. Uh, can we use a systematic review paper for our literature? If so, how to sit it? Thank you, Prof. Okay. Actually, you can write your literature review for your thesis. And after that, you can write a systematic review paper. That's common thing. People did this kind of thing. Mean that you write your literature review first, and after that, you write a systematic review. But if you already has systematic review paper, you can you can include everything 
into your literature review. But you can uh, make sure uh, you put your systematic review paper into your literature review, but not cite it all the time. That one will be considered as self citation. I repeat again, most of the time, people write their literature review first, and after that, write a systematic review paper. But we, you can uh, do different way, where you write your literature review, uh, systematic review first, and then put everything into your literature review. But you can't cite that paper, you know. You can't cite that paper, because that one can be considered a self-citation. Self-citation. Similar as if you have paper from your thesis, you can include your paper into your thesis. Make sure you have different style of uh, writing because paper is different from a thesis writing and chapter writing. But don't cite that paper because if you cite, that one we call it self-citation. Okay? I suggest you write your teacher review and then after that write a systematic review. But you can write your systematic review and after that put your systematic review into your chapter because this is not considered as plagiarism because this systematic review belong belong to yourself. Kamu yang punya uh, systematic review tersebut. You can include into your chapters. But don't cite it. Okay? Try to uh, change it into a literature review. Don't cite your paper from time to time. That one we call a self-citation. I found certain thesis, other thesis yang saya baca, saya lihat, pelajar tersebut cite dia punya paper saja. That one is self-citation. That one is similar study. You cannot cite it. Just change it, change your systematic review and try to put into your literature review in your thesis, not cite it, but try to organize it suit with your chapter. Okay. That's my question. Is it okay? Thank you very much, Professor. And this uh, third question from Al Hamdani from UNER. Uh, in this discussion, what is used in the discussion is only the article that is included in the review, or can we use another article to add to the discussion? I try to understand what is used in the discussion is only article that is included in the review, or can we use another article to add to the discussion? Yes, sure, you can. You can include paper from other uh, from one article and then you can include another article into your discussions yeah i mean what i mean that don't try to include information from other people introduction into your paper you can include information from other people discussions in your review and you can include many papers from from your discussion, other paper discussions into your into your review. So you can include other paper informations into your review. Is it, I, I answer the questions. Kita boleh ambil discussion paper daripada orang lain, discussion daripada orang lain ke dalam paper review paper kita. Okay, thank you very much for, uh, for Ms. Professor Ali. Uh, maybe anyone, do you have uh, any another question to ask directly for Professor Ali, maybe? Kalau tak, saya tunjukkan okay. yang, saya tunjukkan yang ni. Can I, can I show this? Yes, sir. Okay. Boleh, uh, Dr. Aziza? Boleh, Prof. 
<coughs> Oke, okay, okay. Dani, ada... Dani yang mau presentasi Dani, mahasiswa my student from environmental health master. I want to show or what, uh, I want to show. <laughs> oh. Dani, bisa presentasi bisa di share screen? Bisa, Bu. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Yeah. From my student. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Maybe stop share dulu ya. I stop, I stop share. Oke, okay. okay, you, you can present. Thank you. Danny. I think it's good paper. Maybe you can improve it and then after that submit to um, journal. Yeah. Okay, for this, I think, uh, can I comment? So yeah, I think okay. uh, in, in the abstract you already mentioned your your problem statement the act of lockdown lockdown shows in fact and then, so this the like the this is a matter as uh, examine various article about the impact this is your objective the study use uh, when you show this it mean that you are doing systematic review not a review paper systematic review. The result of the lockdown identify improve or the level of air quality. So yes, in uh, this one actually is a, a general information as evident a significant change in condition pollutant. I think this one for for me you need to expand more because the one that you write here is very general because many studies shows that. The most influenced air pollutant due to the pandemic is NO2 and CO. PM 2.5, PM 10 is more toward regional factors, regional, region. Even in India, Pakistan, it's because regional, regional movement of air also reduced, but not as good as NO2 and CO. This one is because of uh, motor vehicles. And many studies lately show that ozone increase because of this lockdown. Because in the city center, in the city center, ozone actually are limited by the contraction of NO. When we have low contraction of NO, the transmission process of O3 will be reduced. This increase O3 in many cities. In, in in the world. So when you mention this, the editor know very well the conditions. He will show you that this one is not really or not not uh, not really correct when you mention O3 also reduce. So uh, I think you need to in your in your uh, discussion you mentioned about O3, but in your uh, abstract you mentioned very general information. So you need to be more specific. And as I mentioned just now, it is good if you can include uh, quantitative information. Okay, maybe you can mention uh, what's the range, the range of reductions all over the world of NO2, for example, and PM and so on. Range of information in the cities. One city is maybe the reduction only 10, The other cities is sixty percent. Maybe you can put uh, the range of reductions of this pollutant is this, this. For me, this one is quite general. Quite general. Okay. Next. Okay, uh, I, I, I think uh, this one, I think maybe you need to uh, improve a little bit. Need to improve a little bit. Because of uh, this, uh, first I think your reference, boleh naik atas kita. If you 
Tak tadi yang introduction. When you write a review paper, this is a bird eye view. Huh? Bird eye view. Editor will see bird eye view. You can see in the introduction, you only have one, two, and three reference. Yes, bro. There are many references based on this topic. When you only have three, the editor will consider that you not read a lot. For example, uh, there is many information related to number three, isn't it? As a result, commercial industrial transportation will close during COVID-19. There are so many people mention this, but you only include one. For me, uh, this information is very general. You need to include more than one references. This to show that you read a lot. You need to show the reader, you need to show the editor at this, at this level, editor, that you read a lot and your introduction is very, very comprehensive. Okay, first you mentioned about the COVID-19. Second one. You mentioned COVID-19 has higher rate of aggressiveness where it's supported through a number of studies. Uh, I just want to comment on this. Huh? In this, uh, in this paragraph, I want to ask you what you want to include actually. In your first center, you mentioned COVID-19 has a higher rate of aggressiveness when the air is polluted. Mean that you want to mention that air pollution actually influence the, 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 the COVID-19 cases, isn't it? Although the number of studies is limited. There are many studies. When you mention this, although the number is study is limited, this one is not good. There are so many studies all over the world this day. COVID-19 has higher rate aggressiveness when air, pol air is polluted. There are many studies in it Italy and other part of the world mention that COVID-19 can be uh, influenced by the level of air pollutant. You mentioned studies in Northern Italy, such as the cities with the high pollutant contamination, a fire change in contracting COVID-19. Yeah. Long-term exposure to PM2.5 increased the mortality of COVID-19 with an increase of 20 times higher than that observed PM10 loading to death 36. Okay, you mentioned this one. But in this paragraph, this one you mentioned about COVID-19 and air pollution. But start from this, you mentioned change in the air pollution or pollutant in the atmosphere have been reported in India. You can see that this thing is different from this. Nampak tak? Saya beritahu apa yang saya maksudkan di sini Apa yang ditulis oleh Dani ialah air quality can influence the COVID-19. But yes. this ini, start from change, you mentioned that air pollutant will be reduced because of COVID-19 lockdown. So, apa yang saya nak masukkan di sini, dua, di sini, dalam satu paragraph, you ada dua informasi yang berbeza, berbeza. Satu, you want to mention COVID-19 akan menjadi lebih teruk menjadi lebih teruk disebabkan oleh air pollutant. Di sini, you want to mention lockdown akan menyebabkan COVID-19 uh, lockdown oleh COVID-19 akan merendahkan air pollutant. Ini salah satu contoh di mana dua dalam satu paragraph you ada dua informasi yang berbeza. Itu sebenarnya salah. Sila. Sebenarnya apa yang you nak beritahu ialah this one. So you can, uh, what you, you can do is you expand this first part of this paragraph. Expand this. Second, you put this one, change in the condition of pollutant. Reduce because of COVID-19. So you must have ada satu lagi paragraph yang berbeza. Otherwise, people will confuse. Sini you kata COVID-19 
menyebabkan uh, air pollutant menyebabkan COVID-19 bertambah teruk. Tapi di sini you mention COVID-19 menyebabkan udara bertambah baik. Jadi reader akan akan confuse because of these two information. That's why I said one paragraph you need to have one point of subtopic. Eh? Saya harap orang lain pun boleh faham. Di sini you ingin menyatakan bahawa COVID-19 akan menjadi teruk kalau keadaan air pollution tu agak teruk, agak agak buruk. Di sini you want to mention COVID-19 lockdown sebenarnya akan mengurangkan air pollution. Di sini sebenarnya sekarang ada banyak study tidak semestinya di India, Itali, China sebab orang mesti tanya bertanya kawasan berdekatan dengan kamu. Kalau boleh you now in Indonesia, if possible try to include work from Indonesia. Kenapa you nak cakap pasal Spain, Korea, United States? You are Indonesia. Your neighbor maybe Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, if possible Thailand, if possible try to find data near to your country. Jangan nanti kita nampak terlalu jauh, kuman kalau di Malaysia mungkin saya tak tahu di Indonesia kuman di seberang laut kita nampak gajah di depan mata kita tidak nampak. Uh, one of the the Malaysian lah. Nah. Saya tak tahu di Indonesia pernah ada disebut ni tapi di Malaysia sebut kuman di seberang laut kita nampak tapi gajah di depan mata kita tidak nampak. So make sure you include data related near 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 us, okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah, and then after that you mention uh, so this one you can separate into two different paragraphs. And study conducted in China show there is a significant link between air pollution and COVID-19 infection. Now you repeat again. Your study actually you want to mention air quality will be good, becoming better when we have lockdown. But now you repeat again. You want to mention this one, the first part. Study COVID-19. This one you should include in the this paragraph. Studies in 2,000 cities in China show that there is significant link between air pollution and COVID-19 infection. You should include this in the this paragraph and this change. Air pollution is considered a cofactor that help increase the effect of pandemic. So this one also different things. Okay. And at last, you mentioned this study aim to describe change of air quality parameter in city and the world. So you want to mention changes, but you don't have good introduction on the changes. So please, ambil yang ni, dua ayat ni, masukkan ke atas. Yang ni buat satu lagi paragraf. And after that, you want to mention this is your aim. The study aim to describe changes in air quality parameters in major cities around the world. When you mention cities around the world, if possible, you include the world. World ni besar. Besar, maksud dia world you need to, if possible lah, you need to include I mean, when you mention world, people will read, people that read your paper nanti mungkin datang dari South America, Brazil. Suddenly kata, oi, I did this, but he, he, he never mentioned. His paper is about around the world. Your study is about around the world. But you, you mention only Italy, China, State, Korea, Spain, even people from Malaysia, no. There are several studies in Malaysia. Katanya the world, tapi Datanya sedikit saja. <laughs> Contohlah, yang itulah. Next, turun bawah. I not comment your methodology, but I think you need, uh, I think it's good, this one is good. But make sure if possible, you to try to improve a number of paper that you read. Result discussion. Okay, now. Okay. Uh, table tadi, table. I think table also, uh, Table also good, no problem for this. Uh, you already improved this. So make sure it's representative. If possible, uh, if, kalau you boleh, macam mana you susun table tu? I like if you susun, susun with structure. Maybe you can separate. First, you mention yang dekat-dekat dulu, maybe Asia. After that, maybe Europe. Maybe other, okay? 
Don't just put without any structure. Kalau boleh, kalau apa-apa yang kita present dalam kita punya table of figures, need to have structure. I like for example to present Asia first. After that maybe Europe. Maybe after that America. Or maybe South America. Maybe after Africa. So good if you have structure. Okay? Okay. Uh, this one, maybe you can cite for example, I, I like if you most of your paper ni daripada the cities. Can cities. Yeah. Maybe you can mention in your topic is major cities in the world. Major cities. That one much much more uh, interesting. Lah. The next. Uh, so that I want to comment your ni. Uh, di sini kalau you tak boleh present keseluruhan kan maybe you can try to find interesting or important study as the representative you mentioned world kan so you include major cities for example major cities ah huh? sebenarnya saya nak komen you punya figure ni ini komen figure saya saya beritahu itu percentage okey di sini you tidak tulis, perlu tulis 40 Point zero zero. Zero zero is no meaning. Hanya tulis 40 saja. Tidak ada titik perpuluhan. Kalau boleh yang sini pun saya rasa tidak perlu tulis mungkin boleh tulis A, B, C, D. No need to put a title. Selalunya dia tidak ada tidak ada line lah. Tapi yang ni saya nak komen. 150 bukan 150.00. Okay, next. So, uh, try to give reason on why you choose that particular cities. Kenapa you pilih in city saja? Kan? You sudah ada table yang banyak tadi. So, why you choose this? You have reason. And ozone eh. Ozone tidak semestinya turun. Tidak semestinya turun eh. Dia ada naik. So it's good if you also indicate several cities show that ozone also increase. So you need to read more on this. I think many editors now are very well informed that ozone is increased during the lockdown. So when they look this, they say, oh, all more impossible. And maybe some of the data, if you think that data is not <coughs> good, this one is increased, isn't it? increase if good if you can uh, differentiate between increase and decrease for example tapi tak apa kalau you tulis increase pun no problem tak ada masalah tapi di atas you tak tulis dia sebenarnya in your uh, abstract you not mention that this decrease eh, you tulis all increase and last And okay, after that you discuss about this. Oh, I, 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 I think it's okay, no problem. But make sure you choose, you discuss all these parameters based on your table and figures. Jangan tulis tanpa ada rujukan figures. Okay. And then next. I think the, this one I comment, I want to comment. This is too simple. You need to improve support your conclusion with your main finding. At least you show range of the this range of re reductions. This one for me a uh, 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 very general conclusion. <coughs> okay, very general conclusion. You need to put more. As uh, as I mentioned, we are scientists. We need to put quantitative quantitative information. In in many journal, they will ask the reviewer, is it Conclusion supported by data. <laughs> mean that the editor usually want to know that. So you need to put your, uh, this one, uh, I think the lockdown was carried out pandemic. You mentioned this is, uh, meanwhile, O3 has increased. So how, 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 how this O3 increases and how different from different part of the world. So 
you can include, in, uh, include more information on this. And my overall comment, first, I think you need to include more references because this is review paper. Second, uh, I think you need to uh, improve your abstract as well. After that, you need to improve your uh, figures. Need to make sure you have a very, very concrete reason on why you choose certain cities. And because all your paper is uh, mentioned about world, you need to make sure you have representative all over the world and try to answer your, uh, your, your, your uh, review in the conclusions. It be, if you want to write something about the world, you usually want to compare between different part of the world, isn't it? Different part of the world. Not just include everything that you get from the literature. So you need to compare different part of the world. So you can answer that in conclusion. For me, this paper is, is good. You need to improve it to make sure the paper becoming better and better. Ada soalan, Danny? Cukup, Rob. Okay. Any other questions? It's a good paper. You need to improve. Make sure when you write something, you need to put a line number and put a page number, okay? Thank you, bro. Line number and page number, easy for the reviewer to review your paper. Even to Sam Lesana, Sam Lesana also like this, uh, just to make sure, kalau you nak hantar di Sam Lesana, make sure the, you put the reference style, reference style uh, as Sam Lesana paper. And after that, you need to include uh, page line number and page number. Ada soalan? Okay, thank you very much, Professor Kali. Um, Mbak Zita, apakah dilanjut ada review lagi atau bagaimana? Uh, mungkin pertanyaan yang lain aja. Reviewnya cukup satu saja. Nah, waktunya mau habis. Oke. Okay. Uh, Untuk... Okay, Untuk para peserta dan peresitan, apakah ada yang ingin mengajukan pertanyaan kembali? Mungkin bisa ditulis pada kolom chat atau bisa dinyatakan langsung kepada Profesor Kang. Silakan bagi yang mau bertanya langsung ya, terutama ini mahasiswa S3 program doktor yang wajib uh, publikasi Scopus ini ada Mbak Ika Mbak Aryu Nani from uh, doctoral student mungkin ada pertanyaan silakan Pak Dede ada Mbak Ika Rahmawati Semua sudah faham. Atau mungkin malah sebaliknya. Kurang paham. <laughs> <laughs> Kenapa mereka diam saja. <laughs> Oke, okay, ayo. Uh, Mida, silakan Mida. Masih merenung itu, Bu. Oh, Bu Kori, silakan Bu Kori. Tenda masih merenung. Oh, masih merenung. <laughs> ya. Yeah. Saya nampak uh, saya nampak semua paper yang diberi kepada saya ada potensi untuk dihantar ke jurnal yang bagus baik. Cuma yeah. kena ada uh, sedikit uh, apa tu um, mentor mentoring system. Mentoring system mungkin yeah, uh, system. kan ada kita ada sampai November yeah. 18 18. Nah itu bertahap makanya mulai start ini one by one ada beberapa paper dari student nanti diperbaiki diperbaiki sampai finally insyaallah uh, ready for to the uh, submit to journal. Yeah. Yeah. Saya suggest uh, cuba hantar ke jurnal yang bagus sebab saya rasa yeah. ini akan akan 
memberi peluang uh, paper tersebut di review dan di komen. Uh, okay. Tak apa, nak hantar saya Malaysia sana pun no problem. Uh, bagus juga. Saya rasa reviewer akan komen. Okay. Uh, komen tu sebenarnya boleh meningkatkan. Once you can publish in good journal, you can publish anytime. Saya mula daripada situ lah. Dulu saya pun takut-takut juga nak hantar ke jurnal yang yeah. bagus. Sebab saya tak confident. Tapi lama-lama bila saya, sekali saya dapat publish di dalam ESRT, saya pun tak tahu masa tu jurnal tu bagus ke tidak. Supervisor saya suruh hantar saja. Saya pun tak tahu. Tapi bila yeah. saya dapat tahu dari rakan-rakan saya jurnal tu bagus dan saya rasa saya more confident. Sebab saya pun sama juga macam orang lain. Saya study di UKM uh, untuk uh, degree, masters. Dan saya pun tak pandai menulis sangat. Tapi saya rasa uh, once you can publish in good journal, you can publish anytime. Saya nak, banyak bagi motivasi kepada rakan-rakan student di Malaysia, di UKM dan juga di universiti lain. Saya nampak begitulah. Mula-mula kadang-kadang saya baiki paper tersebut. Mereka masih nak hantar lagi jurnal yang kurang bagus. Tapi sekali bila dia dapat publish dalam jurnal yang bagus, saya lihat uh, dia mula uh, publish dalam jurnal-jurnal yang bagus dan akhirnya uh, dia akan jadi seorang researcher yang hmm. baik. Lah. Bagus. Yang Cuma bagus. ada satu problem, Prof. Ya. Yeah. Very problem uh, from our student. Jika kita hantar ke jurnal yang bagus, because uh, our student looking for a free of charge journal oh, maybe for uh, jadi uh, mencari yang jurnal-jurnal yang tidak terlalu mahal begitu uh, jadi, majority saya rasa 90% jurnal saya semua jurnal yang yang free uh, yang kemarin free sudah saya cek prof berbayar semua tak tidak 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 Oh, contohnya ada, jurnal Air Quality, Atmosphere and Health, contohnya kan? Ya, di situ ada 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 uh, APC-nya kayaknya. Tidak, jurnal tersebut hanya dibayar sekiranya kita memilih open access. Oh, I see. Oh, jadi yang kemarin diantar itu free semua, bro? Free semua. Saya hantar ke Atmosphere Environment. Oh, I see. Semuanya free, kecuali kalau kita pilih open access. Saya yeah, tak yeah, mampu yeah, untuk yeah. bayar uh, uh, jurnal... Yeah, yeah. Berbayar sebab faham, faham. Faham. Terlalu so, mahal uh, yeah. Kalau nak bayar uh, Seterusnya saya rasa Di seribu uh, lebih Seribu yeah. ringgit Malaysia lebih Dekat-dekat sepuluh Kalau saya Malaysia nak kan berbayar uh, Ah yeah, ya, Saya kata yeah. jurnal yang berbayar ni Sebabkan dia di Di di, di, di apa tu handle Ataupun dia di uh, Punyai oleh uh, Jurnal yang bukan Penerbit tersohor ataupun oh. good uh, uh, good publisher macam publisher yang lain dia agak kaya macam uh, Sevier, Springer, Sage and so on dia agak kaya jadi dia dia tidak perlu bayar tapi dia copyright tu anda uh, jurnal tersebut okey uh, maksud dia bila kita hantar copyright tu ada dia maksud dia kalau orang lain mau baca jurnal tersebut mereka perlu bayar tapi saya melesana dia lah open Open access. Open. Uh, jadi uh, saya mula sana uh, tidak ada, tidak ada wang untuk untuk menguruskan jurnal tersebut jika tidak ada uh, uh, fees. fees. Jadi dia kena perlukan bayar. Tapi kalau jurnal-jurnal lain macam uh, Mosfin Environment, Elsevier uh, jurnal semuanya free. Semuanya Sebenarnya. free. Macam contohnya AAQR, uh, Ibu Kori pun ada hantar di sana sebelum ni. Aerosol Air Quality Research. Ini adalah jurnal ni belong to uh, uh, Taiwan Associate for Uh, aerosol Society, Taiwan uh, uh, Aerosol Association. Jadi uh, jurnal ni bukan di, dipunyai oleh penerbit yang tersebut tadi. Uh, jadi dia perlukan wang untuk mengendalikan jurnal tersebut. Contohnya lagi macam EGU jurnal, um, European Geoscience Union. Ini adalah jurnal yang perlu dibayar sebab sebabnya dia perlukan wang untuk handle jurnal tersebut. Macam saya masalah. Okay. Jadi intinya kalau jurnal-jurnal yang sudah tersohor begitu ya, yang sudah bagus, rata-rata mereka free of charge. Ya, Prof. Free of charge. Kecuali, yang... hmm. ha? Kecuali apabila kita nak, kita jangan pilih open access. Ya. Kita pilih normal, uh, ni maksud dia siapa yang nak, dia perlu hubungi uh, uh, sama ada dia masuk dalam research gate, ya. mohon sendiri paper tersebut daripada pengarang. 
Okey, berarti nanti uh, our student akan kita arahkan ke jurnal-jurnal yang sudah di uh, recommended dari Prof Talib ya. Ya, Prof. contohnya Prof. saya tahu di sini. Karena memang kita arahkan ke free of task, Prof. Kecuali bagi mereka yang para ini lecturer, dosen-dosen begitu mungkin uh, seperti ke Sain Malaysiana dan beberapa jurnal yang berbayar tapi tidak terlalu mahal untuk yang lecturer. Tapi untuk student kita arahkan ke yang free of charge. Begitu ya, Prof? Ya, ya. Saya saya sebenarnya tidak pernah hantar ke jurnal yang berbayar sebelum ni. Semua saya hantar jurnal. Okay. Kecuali bila saya ada grant yang besar dan kadang-kadang saya nak hantar satu dua, saya hantar. Yeah. Dan kebanyakan jurnal yang berbayar tu adalah dengan dengan kumpulan lain lah. Macam contohnya yeah. European Group yang bayarkan saya. Saya tidak ada ruang langsung untuk bayar. Jadi saya selalu Ini hantar kan? Thank you so much. Ya, itu ya, yang ya. kita cari memang. Terutama mahasiswa-mahasiswa kami kan ya berbeda lah kalau negara berkembang sama negara maju. Ya, try. Try, to, very high. try your best uh, to aim high lah. Ya. Oke, okay, insya Allah berarti nanti kalau uh, kita mau submit ke jurnal yang sudah direkomendir Prof. Talib, nanti kita uh, guideline-nya juga mengikuti jurnal tersebut ya, Prof. Jadi nanti ya, ya, ya. Uh, kebanyakan uh, jurnal mempunyai uh, uh, method yang sama. Ya. Yeah. Yeah, you need to write by uh, to try to write uh, try to put uh, double spacing, ada yeah. you punya apa tu uh, page That's number, right. line number, yeah. uh, asingkan you punya figures and table from your main text. Okay. Mungkin ada yang lain, Bu Lilis atau yang lain, Mbak-mbaknya yang doktoral ini, kok pada diam, apa sudah mempunyai publikasi, Mbak Aryuni, Pak Nasrul, Bu Ika, silakan Bu Lilis. Uh, itu apa yang tadi dijelaskan sama Prof. Talib, bahwa jurnal-jurnal yang diberikan alamatnya itu oleh Prof. Talib itu adalah free charge. Kecuali kalau kita mau open open access. Uh, mau open, uh, open access. Nah, padahal kalau kita sebagai dosen untuk mengajukan kenaikan pangkat, jabatan, itu harus open access. Nah kalau open access itu uh, berbayarnya rata-rata sampai berapa dolar ya? Bukan, mak maksud saya open access tu bukan maksud dia di jurnal tu tidak keluar langsung. Open access maksud dia orang lain orang lain yang perlu bayar bukannya kita perlu bayar. Ya, yeah. ya yeah. orang lain yang perlu bayar. Kalau kita misalkan mau mengajukan kenaikan pangkat atau jabatan itu uh, reviewer kita yang ada di Jakarta itu harus bisa mengaksesnya. Makanya harus kita harus membuka uh, open access tersebut. Saya rasa yang tu kita akan dapat artikel tersebut dan kita boleh bagi kepada mereka. Dan kebanyakan uh, library subscribe jurnal-jurnal tersebut. Kalau begitu okay. saya rasa agak rugi jugalah kalau betul-betul tidak boleh publish di situ, agak rugi jugalah. Sebab uh, kebanyakan jurnal tersebut dipunyai oleh publisher Yeah. Mungkin yeah. solusinya begini Prof Talib, solusinya begini, uh, karena memang tuntutan di Indonesia itu uh, misalnya kita ada kepentingan bagi mereka yang menilai kita, ya itu dia juga bisa mengakses, otomatis kita harus mencari yang open access tapi berbayar tidak terlalu mahal, mungkin solusinya begitu. Hmm. Saya takut nanti uh, banyak open access yang tidak terlalu mahal ni. Jurnal tu adalah predatory journal. Jurnal-jurnal yang ada di Scopus lepas setahun sudah tidak ada. Contohnya nah, itu, apa? Itu yang kemarin sering terjadi di universitas kami, Prof. Jadi ada sekitar 200 dosen yang mengikuti jurnal itu yang tersebut. Tiba-tiba sekian tahun satu tahun dua tahun sudah hilang dari peredaran nah itu merugikan bagi para peneliti sih nah itu untuk mengidentifikasi itu bagaimana prof supaya kita tidak ter 
Boleh tengok Boleh. dalam senarai yang saya bagi yang mula-mula tu ada tulis itu predatory journal. Maksudnya uh, kebanyakan jurnal-jurnal yang tidak mahal ni dia sebenarnya kadang-kadang dia tulis minat uh, jurnal American journal, European journal tapi yeah. sebenarnya dia di sebalik tu dia adalah jurnal-jurnal yang berada di negara-negara lain. Dia ada di India, dia ada di uh, Saudi uh, dia ada di uh, apa tu UAE di negara-negara Arab dan sebagainya. Dan dia ni gunakan uh, jurnal ni untuk mengambil duit. Dan dia akan memohon untuk Scopus dan akan masuk. Tapi Scopus akan meeting, akan bermasyarat tiap-tiap kali 6 bulan. Saya sebenarnya adalah salah, uh, supervisor saya adalah salah seorang daripada uh, Scopus board ni. Dan bila dia nampak satu benda yang lain, dia akan tarik balik Scopus list dalam daripada jurnal tersebut. Jurnal tersebut sebenarnya memang tujuannya untuk di list dalam masa satu tahun saja. Sebab apa? Dalam masa satu tahun dia dah sudah cukup untuk kumpul duit wang yang banyak. Kalau 2000 ringgit mungkin, mungkin uh, cari apa? We are looking for uh, for save our our article. Maybe ya seperti kita menggandeng university yang mempunyai jurnal berskopus begitu kah, Prof? Solusinya salah satu solusi. Iyalah, boleh juga. Tak ada masalah. Saya agak heran nah, kalau university kan, kalau university kan pastinya safe kan ada ada perguruan tinggi atau university yang me- membackup. Saya agak heran kenapa uh, mesti open access juga sebab saya lihat kawan-kawan saya di macam di ITB dia banyak publish dalam jurnal-jurnal yang 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 tidak berbayar tadi tapi dia tidak open access lah macam yeah. uh, uh, rakan-rakan San saya Malaysia, San Malaysia tidak open access ya bro open access tapi sebayar seribu enam ratus cuma saya Malaysia ni agak lambat sikit untuk publish iya yeah, tapi saya waktu nyari itu kok susah ya bro Nyari ya. artikel orang lain tidak tidak bisa terbuka untuk Shen Malaysiana. Dia boleh boleh buka boleh dibuka. Boleh dibuka ini. Ya, ya. Kalau tidak boleh antar di jurnal-jurnal yang tidak open access, saya rasa agak rugi juga lah sebab jurnal-jurnal tu yang selalunya banyak citation dan dia agak free dia free. Cuma selalunya kalau di Malaysia kalau kena kapal pangkat kita hantar ke situ lah ke 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 Uh, penilai tentu. Yeah. Bu Lilis ada lagi? Sudah Pak Azizah, terima kasih Pak Prof Talib. Ya, yes, terima kasih banyak Prof Talib akan kami kembalikan pada moderator. Silakan Bu moderator Mbak Kiko. Terima kasih Pak Azizah. Thank you very much for Professor Muhammad Talib Lim Latif. Let me give a summary of this session. Uh, I make some notes for this participation that a uh, systematic review is better to working together. We can discuss with our friends, share ideas, combine it, and can be a good systematic data review paper. And we need to find a lot of reference paper to make sure uh, we can summarize data in our table. And uh, interesting and hot topic is strategic for the systematic review and relevant and new topic in our paper. Uh, that's all from me. I would like to say apologies for my mistake today and hopefully all of you can apply for our next publication. Okay, thank you very much for Professor Muhammad Talib Latif. I will come back to Master of Ceremony. Terima kasih uh, kepada moderator Fiko Ainun Nur Aisyah yang telah memandu materi diskusi dan tanya jawab. Uh, kepada para peserta ajian profesor yang ingin mendapatkan sertifikat dan materi mohon untuk mengisi evaluasi form setelah acara ini berakhir. Materi presentasi narasumber akan kami kirimkan bersama dengan sertifikat ke email masing-masing peserta ajian profesor yang telah mengisi presensi dan evaluasi from. Ya. Acara selanjutnya yaitu penyerahan sertifikat oleh Ibu Dr. Roro Aziza SHMKES kepada ya. Ibu kami persilakan. Yang share screen. Uh, Mbak Viko. 
Biku yang share screen. Ya, share screen sertifikatnya, Mbak. Sertifikat. Oh, maaf, Mbak Siti. Sertifikatnya bukan di saya, Mbak. Oh, Ya, kepada Ibu Dr. Aziza SHMK uh, untuk penyerahan sertifikat ke Bapak Prof. Dr. Muhammad Talib bin Latif. Pada Ibu kami persilakan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya, ini Prof. Talib, uh, terima kasih atas segala suggestion, segala share, pengalaman uh, publikasi ya how to write a good systematic literature review paper insya Allah nanti menjadi bahan pertama perbaikan untuk khususnya adik-adik my student ya S1 S2 maupun program doktoral barokah semua ilmu dari uh, Prof Talib kepada kami kita serahkan ke Prof Talib silakan Prof ini sertifikatnya terima kasih terima kasih Ibu Aziza atas sertifikat ini saya um, um, harapkan uh, apa tu sedikit ilmu daripada saya dapat dikongsi bersama. Saya minta maaf kalau ada apa-apa kesalahan. Terima kasih. Sama-sama. Kami juga mohon maaf kalau ada salah kata, salah perbuatan. Um, Alhamdulillah sudah berakhir. Kami serahkan kepada MC. Silakan Mbak Siti Zubaida. Ini dari Ambon ya Mbak Siti ya. But dari Ternate Maluku oh, Utara. Dari Ternate. Ternate, Ternate. Okay. Ya, terima kasih Ibu Dr. R. Ajija SHMK um, atas penyerahan sertifikatnya. Acara selanjutnya yaitu penutup dan pembacaan doa. Pembacaan doa akan dipimpin oleh rekan saya Ahmad Ayatullah SKM. Kepada rekan saya Ahmad Ayatullah SKM, kami persilakan. Baik, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Mari kita tumbuhkan kepala sejenak seraya memohon ampunan kepada Allah Subhanahu wa taala dan semoga apa yang kita lakukan pada hari ini diberkahi. Kita akhiri kegiatan hari ini dengan istighfar dan doa kafaratul majelis. Astagfirullah, astagfirullah, astagfirullah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik asyhadu alla ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Amin. Terima kasih kepada Ahmad Ayatullah SKM, Alhamdulillah kita sampai di penghujung acara. Terima kasih kepada narasumber, moderator, serta para peserta yang telah menyokmak acara dari awal hingga akhir. Semoga ilmu yang didapatkan hari ini dapat berguna dan dapat kita aplikasikan. Saya mewakili panitia yang bertugas menyampaikan permohonan maaf apabila ada kata-kata dan perbuatan yang salah atau yang kurang berkenan. Saya Siti Jubaida dan rekan saya Suara Mega Hasana undur diri. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kepada panitia, mohon izin dan narasumber untuk kesediaan sesi foto bersama. Dimohon untuk segera mengambil posisi bagi rekan-rekan yang bertugas. Dipersilakan. Baik, terima kasih. Sesi acaranya, eh, sesi foto bersamanya sudah selesai. Terima kasih, Prof. Muhammad Talif Latif. Terima kasih, Dr. Ajija. Terima kasih, Bu Lilis dan para kasih kembali peserta hari ini. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Prof. Talif atas ilmunya. Sama-sama, Prof. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih. Ketemu lagi Insya Allah Rabu Prof Talib ya. Iya iya, terima kasih. Rabu, ya. Oke, Alhamdulillah. Pamit Prof, monggo. Ya. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih untuk semua partisipan ya S2, S3, S1, panitia, dosen. Alhamdulillah kita ketemu lagi hari. 
Rabu ya Bu Lis ya. Rabu. Saat iya hari Rabu jam sama. Oh, ya. Kalau jam ada materi silakan dikirim ke panitia atau untuk dimintakan pendapat ke Prof Ali. Ya, terima kasih. Oke. Okay. Ya. ya. Terima kasih. Terima kasih Bu. Ini panitia menunggu yang belum ini ya, evalu ngisi evaluasi kan? Benwitsku ini habis, makanya nggak bisa nampilkan orang, nggak, 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 hanya menampilkan foto bisanya. Sudah tak kirim tapi anunya. Sertifikatnya sudah tak kirim ke Protalib. Dan Dani. Ikuti saran Prof. 